Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel Infotech with Zafar Khan. Today I am going to discuss a new series of lecture for DevOps profile and is lecture number 23. The agenda of this lecture is we will provision infrastructure using Terraform. Earlier what we were doing we were using manual process. Manual means we logged in into the AWS console select the resources like EC2 instance, security group, instance type, etc, etc. All these things we are selecting manually and then launch the instance and then it will create the instance. Finally, we connect with the instance and install the required software. Then start the related services as well. So means everything we were doing manually. Suppose your requirement is to create more than 100 server. Is it feasible to create one by one? It is very difficult and will take huge time to complete. So, do we have any mechanism to create quickly and automatically? Yes. There is an infrastructure as code tool called Terraform. In this lecture, we will use Terraform and provision all these resources automatically we will write a code and through this code what we will do we will create an EC2 instance we will create a security group and whitelist port 22 to connect with EC2 instance and then install the software so basically in this diagram the infrastructure code we will write over here and we'll create the EC2 instance and then in this instance we will install the Apache but before doing this we had to know some basic concept of Terraform because we will write some blocks so we need to understand all those blocks what exactly it is doing okay so let's discuss now some basic concept of Terraform the first one is the Terra Terraform block the Terraform block contains Terraform setting, including the required providers Terraform will use to provision your infrastructure. For each provider, the, the source attributes define Terraform install provider from Terraform registry by default. So here I am using AWS as a provider. So in this configuration, the AWS provider source is defined as a HashiCorp slash AWS, which is a shorthand for registry.terraform.io. Okay, so you can also set a version constraint for each provider defined in the required provider block. The version attribute is optional. You can either set or not, you cannot set as well, but this is optional. So the version attribute is optional, but I recommend that using it to constrain the provider version so that Terraform does not install a version of the provider that does not work with your configuration. If you do not specify the provider version, Terraform will automatically download the most recent version during the initialization. When you, when you will initialize the Terraform code, then it will automatically download the most recent version. Next one is the provider. Now provider block configure the specified provider in this case AWS provider. So basically a provider is a plugin that Terraform uses to create and manage your resources. So here you can specify the reason which reason you want to create your resources. You want to uh, create in Mumbai reason or some other uh, uh, reason as well. So you just mention over the reason over here. Okay. You specify basically the reason as well as you need to mention the access key and secret key as well to connect the provider. Otherwise it will not work. So you can use multiple provider block in your Terraform configuration to manage resources from different providers you can even use different providers together okay next one is the resources 
the resource block have two things the resource type and a resource name what type of resources you are going to do and what is the name of so there is the two strings over here so in this example the resource type in of aws is aws instance and resource name is app server so i am putting over here the app server i will basically install the apache that's why i have mentioned the app server it's up to you what the name you can provide over here so terraform manages the aws instance resource with the help of aws provider both resource type and resource name form a unique id for resource so you can use the resource block to define the component of your infrastructure say for example ami amazon machine image so you have a list of image images when you start actual work in your company when you join the company you may get the list of images okay so accordingly you can put over here the amazon machine image and the instant type you select the instant type t2 micro or t3 medium or something more than more advanced according to your requirements so generally we use the t2 micro because it is a free tier so for ec2 instance the example configuration sets the ami id basically it's a ami id okay to an linux image and the instance type is uh, t2 micro which qualifies aws free tier it also sets a tag to give the instance name if you want you can put the instance name over here so when it is created the instance it will uh, in the aws site uh, you will get the name over here okay so whatever the name you can put over accordingly so i am putting over there app server now uh, let's discuss about the provisioner so provisioners are used to execute a script on a local or remote machine as a part of resource creation or destruction when you are creating a resource provisional is provisional uh, is used to execute the script or uh, even you can des destruction as well destruction means you are if you want to delete everything over there you can simply destroy it okay i will show you then install the install software edit files and provision machines created with the terraform so cloud in it automatically provision ssh key and a web server onto a linux virtual machine created by the terraform in aws so there are basically uh, two types of provisioner generic provisioner and vendor provisioner so we will discuss about the generic provision only so th these provisioners generally vendor independent and can be used with any cloud vendor example file provis file provisioner local exact provisioner remote exact provisioner okay so let's discuss each about this what is file provisioner so file provisioner is basically uh, is used to copy the file or directories from the machine machine means local machine executing the terraform apply to newly created resource then it will copy the files or directory the file provisioner can connect to the resource using either ssh or win rm connections so now local exact provisioner local exact provisioners invoke a local executable after a source is created this invokes a process on the machine running terraform not on the resource it will uh, process on the machine running terraform so basically this provision local exact provision is used when you want to perform some task onto your local machine when you have when you have installed the terraform so local exact provisioner is never used to perform any task on the remote machine it will always be used to perform local operation onto your local machine now next one is the remote exact provisioner this is an important one which we may, we are going to use it so as the name suggests remote exact provisioner is always going to work on the remote machine 
with the help of this you can specify the commands of shell script that you want to execute on the remote machine the remote exec provisioner invokes a script on a remote resource after it is created so this can be used to run a configuration management tool bootstrap into a cluster etc so it requires a connection and support both ssh as well as winrm okay so these are the uh, provisioners which we have discussed let's do the demo for provisioning these resources we will create a user first and then provide the necessary privileges basically we will provide the admin privileges to do everything then we will download the access key and secret key to get the access on aws provider and then uh, we'll write a terraform code okay so let's go to the aws ec2 in, uh, machine and then we'll create user okay so click over here services and then i am okay so now user so i have already an, uh, one user but i will create in front of you so that you will understand basically so add user i'll put the name khan1 okay and will generate the access key and password as well so password i am providing over here okay and it is asking required password reset no i will not reset it whatever i have given over here uh, that is fine okay next permission so i will provide the permission attached over here admin access okay i am not adding the user group and something like that so just attach the existing policy whatever the policy we have so admin admin access basically i want to give it's optional one so let's skip this one okay so now admin permission admin administrative access is given so create a user now so creating and here the access key and the secret key so let's copy this one or you can download as a as a csv file so i am just copy over here the access key and put somewhere else okay and then also copy this one secret key right so now close this one yeah so this the khan1 user has been created so what i will do i will log in this khan1 dot khan1 users okay so just log out this one the root user and let's log in i am user so let's log in with the new user khan user so this is the id basically and the username is khan1 password which i have given so i have logged in the khan user and just click the ec2 instance we don't have anything over there right instance is showing zero okay we don't have anything over there so now we will create a ec2 instance through terraform okay we will not select the launch user and then select manually we will not do anything manually we will create 
through Terraform. Okay, so what we will do, we will write a Terraform code. Okay, so here uh, let's write in a single folder. I will not write in a single file. Okay, I will write on different files. I'll show you. First, let's create a folder. Terraform project. Let's go inside the Terraform project. Okay, we don't have anything over here. Okay, so now just create VI. First, we'll create a provider. Provider dot TF. Provider dot TF. Okay. I have written already uh, so to save our time just will copy I will explain in details what exactly the blocks are doing okay so now access key and secret keys let's put the access key I have already copied here the access key and put over here Remember access key should not be show. You need to disable your user. Okay. I'll disable it sometime later. Yeah. So let's copy this one. and paste over here so this is the terraform block okay so required provider is aws and source is basically this hashicorp slash aws and version <coughs> is greater than 4 4.0 okay and then provider is aws and reason i am creating in a mumbai region so mumbai region uh, how you know that mumbai region uh, has ap south one so just to click over here it's a mumbai Select Mumbai, all these reasons. So, Asia Pacific is a different one. Asia Pacific, Seoul is different. Sydney is different. So everything is different. So, I'm just using the uh, Mumbai region. So, AP South 1. I just, that's why I have mentioned over here. AP South 1. Okay. And the access key, which just now generated. And secret key generated. Okay. So, this is the Terraform, uh, which Terraform block basically. Okay, so I have mentioned the AWS provider and just save it. Yeah. Next one, I will create a security group. Security group dot TF. Okay. Similarly, I'll copy this one as well. Okay, so this is the security group which I have mentioned. Uh, so <clears throat> the security group is basically mobile uh, the resource name. Okay, so resource is AWS security group. Okay, and here it is the name allow.tls. Okay, so name I have mentioned in the below and description. It's a basically inbound traffic we are doing so that's why allow inbound traffic so whatever the inbound traffic will come so that will we will allow so description is uh, you can put anything over there so okay and the ingress ingress means see basically uh, in the AWS we are using the inbound and outbound so here in the terraform we are writing ingress and egress okay so this is nothing but a inbound and outbound. This is ingress means inbound and this is the outbound. Okay. So ingress here description I have mentioned that TLS from BCP and from underscore port is 22 to connect with the SSH connectivity we will do over here. Okay. And if you want to work in a web server, then you will to you have to put some other port 8080 or something like Gen. If you are installing the Jenkins, then you have to put something like that, 8080 or some 80 or 443 like that. So according to requirement, you can put over here from uh, from port and to port. Okay. So I am just simply simply writing over here to connect the SSH. 
okay so port 22 i am using and protocol is nothing but a tcp cidr block is let's uh, keep uh, uh, public okay and here is the egress outbound okay outbound is 00, zero i am keeping over here right and the tag name which i have mentioned the name over here so that i have also tagged it okay so let's save it okay so now i have two things provider.sg and uh, provider.tf and uh, security group.tf one more file we need to create that is i'm putting ec2.tf where i will creating over here ec2 instance so let's write over here copy this one okay i'm explaining in details what exactly we are doing okay so this is the resource we are selecting the aws instance and instance name wave okay so ami we have already copied this one ami okay and the instance type is t2 micro because it is a free, free tier so we are using the t2 micro availability zone i have written here ap south 1a 1b and 1a there are two availability zones so you can select as per your requirement key name is jenkin key jenkin key i have already generated okay this is the private key basically i have already generated i will show you okay so i am using the same existing key name key name and then vcp security group id vcp security group id we have security group i have already created aws security group dot allow this name was this one and dot id so name security group name first security group aws security security group and then allow uh, security group name and then dot id so it will create the by default this id so i am assigning to vcp security group id now provisioner provisioner which we have discussed so, so remote exec we are using okay so provisioner is remote exec and here you will write inline so what i am going to do in between inline sudo yum update hyphen y so basically it will create aws ec2 instance and once it is created we will update it manually we were do we were doing right so now through code itself we will update it and then once it is updated then we'll install the apache okay and then we'll start the service apache service so here it would be great it would be better to write over here restart rather than start because if you are starting multiple times so better to restart okay so here and you mentioned the comma comma whatever the activities under the inline you are doing you mentioned the comma comma otherwise it will not work okay and then connection what connection we are doing ssh connectivity host name i have put at the cell because i am using the same one okay so that's why self dot public ip and user you know ec2 user okay and here the private key i am using the jenkins key dot pm pm file pm file i have already generated and then the server name which i have mentioned is the web server okay so this is the basically web server uh, yeah or app server it, it will create okay right so let's check the braces is correct or not Okay, this one is right and then connection is this one is also correct this one is also correct so so this is basically closing the last one okay 
it is closing the last one okay yeah fine so I think this all are good so, right now we need to keep here as uh, the um, key generated key oh, here okay so I think it is on my so let's copy this key this key we need to copy from here to so CP where Terraform project yeah let's go to Terraform project and let's check all are there or not yes so all four files are there right so we have written the provider.tf and a security group .tf, tf ec2 instance where we are creating and then file we have also there so this file i have already created right so now first what we will do terraform init Let's check everything is working fine or not. Right. So now Terraform has been successfully initialized. Now what we will do, we will check the plan. What exactly we are doing. So yeah. So I think everything is showing correctly. What exactly we are going to do? Just I am showing over here. So this is the AMI, okay, which I have mentioned. And the I have selected the T2 micro instance type. Okay, the key name which I am using the Jenkins key. I'll show you what where the key name is. Let me show you the key name. to dashboard key name so here is the key name Jenki which I have created earlier okay so this one I am using okay so the key name Jenkins key where it is is it this one okay and then rest everything is fine deleting nothing something mentioned over there lot of things all inbound traffic which I have mentioned is showing fine right you can also validate so how you will do that terraform validate it will so successfully validated something like that yes success the configuration is valid now apply when we will put this command apply terraform apply it will create the uh, it will do everything whatever i have mentioned in the code okay so terraform apply first it will ask you to whether you want really want to create yes so I will just put over here yes if you don't put yes no then it will cancel this one okay so I am just putting yes and AWS security group is creating security group allow TLS creating complete after this one this is the ID name ID for security group okay and let's check in the EC2 instance. Go to the instance. Here it is. So web server which I have mentioned web and it is now creating. It is now running. So initializing basically. So let's it complete then connected. It also install the, the Apache. So installing here verifying yes so apply is completed resource 2 is added no change no destroyed okay so 
the uh, EC2 instance is now created automatically. So let's check it's initializing, it's still initializing. Meanwhile, I will just log in this one and check whether the Apache is installed or not. So what I will do, SSH I Jenkins key dot pem ec2 user at the rate of public IP. Let's check whether it is still initializing. <coughs> So here you can see the security group name, which I, I was mentioned over there and the Jenkins key is there. Okay. And then IP address, this was the availability zone AP South 1A I have selected availability zone. Okay, T2 micro and this instance ID, it is created, right? So let's refresh, yes. So now two by two check is passed and it is created. I am able to connect this one as well. So let's check. Yes. Okay. And then I have installed the Apache. So let's check the status of the Apache. It is whether it is working or not. So system, system CTL status httpd this is the apache yes so it is now running apache is running means whatever we have written in the terraform everything is working fine okay okay one more thing so um exit from here okay so now I want to destroy it. Whatever the I have created, I will destroy it. So what I will do, I will simply write a co write command terraform destroy. It will ask again, do you want to destroy it? Yes, enter the value. Yes, I want to destroy. So it is destroying now. Let's go to the AWS instance and we'll check, refresh it. It is shutting down. So it is destroying now, okay? So through Terraform, you can do everything, okay? And there will be uh, some more uh, project will come through you. I will I'll make an more video using the Terraform, okay? So yeah, so destroy completed, resource two is destroyed. So now we don't have anything. We have already destroyed. It's a terminated, right? So within a minute, you can terminate it and you can create number of servers by using the Terraform. So this is all about the provisioning of resources using the Terraform, okay? Uh, you can also modify the resources simply by changing the code as per the requirement. So you can update, you can delete, you can destroy, whatever you want, you can do it by changing the code, okay, as per requirement. So if you have any query regarding this topic, please feel free to put in the comment section of this lecture. I will get back to you at the earliest. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, don't forget to click the subscribe button, please.